today we will try to focus on mainly the 18 electron count rule and then some of those oxidative addition reductive elimination if possible we will try to discuss in detail. Before getting into the organometallic chemistry course, I expect all of you to have some background. Specifically, you are expected to read about structure and bonding. Also, you should have some sort of understanding of counting electrons. I will briefly go through the counting electrons. Well, first of all, Organometallic chemistry is, is a domain, it is a huge domain right. At this point anything that metal is having electronegative carbon attached with it, then usually it is called organometallic complex. The essential part of the organometallic chemistry is one must have a metal and then then we should have a metal carbon bond with it. Now, in order to count the electrons of an organometallic complex, we usually follow two method. One is ionic and another is the covalent method. In the ionic method, we consider ligands as donor of electrons. And in covalent method, we consider ligand as neutral species. Now, for example, if we have a metal ligand complex ML, ML, for covalent method, we will be considering metal and ligand in this configuration. For example, if we have MX, for ionic method, we will be considering M plus and x minus. Now, let us take one example and try to discuss the electron count of it. For the simplicity purpose, I will be discussing mainly the ionic method and the electron counts of the ionic method. So, covalent method, those of you who are familiar with and are comfortable with that, there is nothing wrong with it you can follow the covalent method as well. Mainly I will try to have the ionic method as the discussion mode for the electron count because that makes things little bit easier. For example, we have a chromium complex, chromium hexacarbonyl complex. So, it is going to be an octahedral complex as all of you know. It is an octahedral complex. Now, if you see in the periodic table, scandium, titanium, vanadium, chromium, it would be 6 electron for chromium and 6 of the cobalts are there, sorry, 6 of the carbon monoxides are there. So, each of the carbon monoxide is giving 2 electron. So, total electron is becoming 6 plus 12. 18. So, this is how usually we try to count the electron. For example, as I, as we shown over here, chromium hexacarbonyl complex, chromium having 6 electrons and 6 of the carbon monoxide giving 2 electrons each. Therefore, we are having 6 plus 12, total 18 electrons. Let us try to take another example platinum tetrachloride 2 minus. So, the oxidation state of platinum is platinum 2 plus and therefore, you can count the electrons of it. So, platinum will be 
you know OSIRPT osmium um, iridium platinum showed overall 10 electrons and um, we will have then therefore on the platinum platinum 2 plus will be having you know um, 8 electrons right and 4 of the chlo chlorine each of them are having 2 electrons total of 8 electrons again. So, overall we will have 16 electrons is that ok. This is what ionic method is where we try to find out the oxidation state of each and every metal involved into the complex. In this case platinum is in plus 2 oxidation state each of the chloride will provide 2 electrons to the complex and thereby we have platinum 2 plus total providing 8 electron into the complex 4 chloride each giving 2 electrons into the complex. So, therefore, we have another 4 times to 18 electron overall it is a 16 electrons complex. Similarly, something you can work out on your own cyclopentadienyl ferrocenyl dicarbonyl chloride if you count the electron you will be able to find that it is a 18 electron complex ok. That is something you can uh, try to find out on your own right. So, I think uh, I would expect at this point that you, you try to take some complex try to count the electron most often you will get you know 16 or 18 electron complex. It is possible to have electron count other than 16 or 18 you just need to count it carefully. Now, let us look at a special case where we do see metal metal bonding. Whatever the method you are following either ionic method or covalent method you are expected to add one electron to the electron count and then come up with the total electron if you are having a metal metal complex. What is an example of a metal metal complex? Let me show you one of them. So, this is a diiron complex bridged with carbonyl terminal ligands are C p and carbonyl it is a it is a complex where we see that iron is in plus 1 oxidation state right. So, the electron counts for iron in plus 1 would be total giving you 7, seven electron right iron electron count for iron atom is d 6 s 2. So, total 8 electrons iron is in plus 1 oxidation state and therefore, we have 7 electrons for iron 1 plus. Now, if you look at carbon monoxide it will be giving CO will be giving 2 electrons as I tried to discuss iron plus 7 electrons cyclopentadienyl this is in ionic mode. So, C p minus that means 6 electron bridging carbon monoxide will give you 2 electron and then metal metal bridge as we say should give you 1 electron you should count 1 electron for metal metal bond. Now, overall then if you count 7 plus 2 9 plus 6 15 plus 2 plus 1. So, overall you have 18 electron ok. So, once again if you have a metal metal bond in an organometallic complex you are expected to add one electron by either of the ionic method or covalent method. Let us take another example it is a rhodium complex I would like to discuss rhodium chloride bridge complex it is a dinuclear complex terminal ligands are ethylene. 
Now, if you want, you can just you know split the molecule into half. What you see is a rhodium 1 plus that means it is going to have it is a D7 S2 electronic configuration, total 9 electrons, rhodium 1 plus should be giving 8 electrons, right? Everybody got it correct? 8 electrons, 2 of the ethylene, each of them are giving 2 electrons, so total of 4 electrons, and chloride is giving you 2 electrons, the 1 any one of them if you if you pick up. So, it is a 16 electron so far. Now, as you know this bridging chloride both of them in addition of them being a negatively charged they will also give you lone pair to the other rhodium. So, another 2 electrons you have to consider for overall electron. So, bridging electron chloro B overall then you will have 10 14 plus 2, 16 electron, 16 electrons you will have. So, this complex dirhodium, dichloro bridge and diethylene complex where you see that the chloride is the bridging one, each chloride are attached with each of those rhodium. Therefore, total electrons coming from 2 chloride from for any particular rhodium is going to be 2 plus 2 total 4. Rhodium is in plus 1 oxidation state that means it is having 8 electrons. So, 8 plus 4 from the chloride and 4 from the ethylene overall it is a 16 electron complex. Are we all clear with this? All right, let us move on for the next example. Now, we can have yet another example where we see that it is a once again it is a rhodium complex, dirhodium complex. We have hydrogen or hydride and chloride bridged and terminal ligands being chloride and cyclopentadiene. Now, if you try to count the electron for rhodium, rhodium here we, we see that it is rhodium 3 plus, right. Now, rhodium 3 plus will rhodium is D7 S2, so total 9 electrons, rhodium 3 plus will be 6 electrons. Cp star will again have 6 electrons. Terminal chloride that will give you 2 electrons. Now, the bridging chloride for each of the rhodium it will give 2 electrons and the hydride H it will give you 2 electrons. Now, this is a special case as you can see the hydride, hydride will have overall 2 electron and this is something called 2 electron 3 centered bridging, 3 centered bridging. For each of the rhodium, then you have to count 2 electron for the hydride bridging. So, overall for each rhodium, we have 2 electrons from hydride, 2 electrons from chloride. So, 2 plus 2, 4, another 2 from this chloride that is 6. 6 from the Cp star that is 12, rhodium is 3 plus that means another 6 electron overall then you have a 18 electrons complex. So, I hope it is becoming now clear that the electron count of each of the metal complexes can be done very carefully. You can have ionic method or covalent method for counting the electrons. Preferably for this course, I will try to stick to the ionic method. If any of you are more comfortable with the covalent method, there is no problem with it. 
you can follow it. As you know, in the ionic method, we'll have uh, a cation and an ion formation, and in the covalent bond, we'll have a metal and ligand as the ligand two electron donors formation. Ligand will be dealt as a neutral species. Once again, most of the complex you will find will have 18 electron, some of them will have 16 electron, some rare cases you might will have also 14 electron, but whatever it is, you should remember few basic things that it is possible to have a 2 electron 3 center bond, that is the last case we have discussed where hydride is bridged between the 2 rhodium. Okay. So, 2 electron are shared between the 3 center. We, we, if there is a metal metal bond, then you have to add 1 electron more to the total count. And otherwise, I guess most of the example we have covered so far. I expect you to practice on these uh, you know electron counts and you should be basically able to count the electron in your almost in your dream and none of the time you should have a wrong calculation because this is going to be very very effective in terms of discussing the fundamentals of some of the organometallic chemistry that we will be covering in this course. Okay. Now, as we are trying to discuss, let us try to see 16 electron complexes and 18 electron complexes and the mode of reaction they undergo. So, we will discuss 16 electron complexes and 18 electron complexes separately and try to see how they are reacting. Is the reactivity going to be similar for 16 electron and 18 electron complexes or are they going to differ? That is the major question we would like to address. 16 electron complex, I think a moment ago we have discussed some of them, 16 electron complexes. Now, let us take a simplified example ML4 and assume that this is 16 electron, ligand is let us say each of the ligands are uh, having 2 electron let and uh, you know let us give an example this nickel complex where we have nickel phosphine, aryl fluoride and triethyl phosphine two of them. Now, if you try to count the electron for these complexes, so what we will find 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 of the ligands that means 8 electrons, 4 ligands, 2 each. Nickel is in plus 2 oxidation state that means it is a 8 electron count again for it. So, nickel is D8 S2 total 10 electron, nickel is in plus 2 oxidation state, 8 electrons total then and 8 from the 4 other ligands total it is a 16 electron complex. Usually, if it is reacting with another ligand, this 16 electron complex reacting with another ligand and the rate constant is k, this is a slow process. What we see usually, we, we do see that a 18 electron species formation, if L prime is reacting with ML4, we get ML4 L prime complex, 16 electron complex reacting with 2 electron donor ligand, it is becoming 18 electron complex. The next step will be faster, it is a fast reaction and it will undergo ligand exchange overall we will then have M L 3 L prime and L will come out of the system. So, a 16 electron complex will undergo associative mechanism, this is the one where ligand is getting associated with the 16 electron complex becoming or giving rise to an 18 electron complex, this 18 electron complex then will undergo fast dissociation to have a ligand exchange and will give rise to ML3L prime 
along with formation of the ligand L. Now, let me give you a practical example that the same one will will use the nickel complex where we will see that nickel is tetra coordinated of course, it is a square planar complex the same one which we were discussing a moment ago it is a 16 electron complex by now hopefully you will be able to count the electrons very quickly it reacts with let us say pyridine that is the exogenous ligand. Overall now from tetra coordinate we have a penta coordinated nickel complex pyridine is associated with the nickel along with the other ligands right. So, 16 electron complex going to 18 electron complex and from here on chloride will come out ok and we will have a tetradentate or tetra coordinated nickel complex back where it will be again square planar along with formation of the chloride from the system. Just to clarify once again this is a 16 electron complex coming to give you 18 electron complex while reacting with pyridine and chloride is coming out from the system to give you back a 16 electron complex. So, therefore, it is to simplify usually 16 electron complexes undergo associative mechanism to give you 18 electron intermediate which will then rapidly dissociate to give you back 16 electron complexes. Now, for this reaction the one we have just discussed where pyridine is exchanging with the chloride how and of course, you can do some experiment to prove that this is what is the trend. Now, if you are looking at the aryl group, this aryl group if you substitute the aryl in one case if you have if you have toluyl ok in another case if you have mesityl the expected pattern of reactivity or the observed for pattern of reactivity is aryl if it is toluyl versus if it is aryl mesityl the rate constant varies 6000 times. So, the aryl one when it is toluyl that means less sterically demanding that is the one which will react very fast compared to the one with mesityl which is sterically demanding or bulky and thereby will be preventing the pyridine coordination this is the one which is the slow step pyridine coordination will be hindered if this aryl is mesityl one that means sterically demanding one the reaction will be slow if the aryl is less sterically demanding then this step will be faster and then therefore, depending on the aryl whether it is a toluyl or mesityl we can have a significant difference in the rate constant and two rate constant if you compare the toluyl one is 6000 times faster compared to the mesityl one. So, as you just see these uh, complexes nickel complexes underwent an associative mechanism where starting nickel complex was 16 electron and then the ligand came in give rise to 18 electron complex which then rapidly dissociate to give you the 16 electron complex. Overall it is a 16 electron complex undergoing an associative mechanism to give you a 18 electron complex which then dissociates to give you 16 electron complex. So, 16 electron complex starting out resultant is also a 16 electron complex in between you have an 18 electron complex. If you try to draw the you know the energy profile of, of this reaction it should somewhat 
looks like this is the first step which is the slow step and then the next step is the very first one first one to give you the product okay with this we will we'll meet again soon in the next class thank you all and uh, i expect you will be studying on the electron count mainly and look at the 16 electron complexes as well i hope all of you will be able to do the electron count very easily so that we can discuss at the same space have a nice one see you bye bye